Okay, so in this video, we're going to discuss the process known as mitosis. Now, what I would challenge you to do is at the end, come back to the beginning of this video right here and just watch this, uh, this summary right here. Here we have a cell and it's going to go through mitosis. And so first thing that's going to happen is the chromatin is going to be copied. And so there it happened. Next thing that's going to happen is the nucleus is going to dissolve. And there goes the nucleus. Next thing would be the chromatin is going to condense into chromosomes. And so the strands of chromatin condense into the X-shaped chromosomes. Next thing would be the chromosomes are going to be pulled to the equator of the cell. The equator just means the middle. So there they've been pulled by something called spindle fibers. And the next thing that's going to happen is the sister chromatids are going to be pulled apart. And there they go. The spindle fibers pull apart the sister chromatids. As we get near the end, cytokinesis is going to split the cytoplasm of the cell, and there it goes. And ultimately, the chromatin is going to uncoil back in, uh, the chromatids, excuse me, the chromatids are going to uncoil back into chromatin. And lastly, perhaps the nucleus is going to reform. And so that's a real quick summary. I know this is, the video just started and I'm already doing a summary. But if you come back to this at the end, it'd be a nice little summary for you. So let's go ahead and get started and go through that process that we just uh, discussed. So we first, all, first off, let's ask ourselves, what is mitosis? Mitosis is a type of cell division. It's how your somatic cells, it's how your body cells, it's how your non-sex cells divide. And so in the picture here, you have a karyotype, if you recall, and a karyotype show this karyotype. You can see two chromosome 1s and two chromosome 12s and two chromosome 10s. This is a karyotype of a somatic cell. If you recall, somatic cells are also diploid. Diploid simply means you're going to have two of every chromosome. That's why you see two chromosome 15s and two chromosome 20s, because diploid cells have two of every chromosome. So when you think of somatic cells that are diploid, cells of the body that go through mitosis, well, we know they're somatic and diploid, but examples would be like muscle cells and skin cells and liver cells. And so when we shift our focus away from the human, the human body and we talk about mitosis and other forms of life, you know, it's really how other forms of life can even asexually reproduce. Bacteria do a process called binary fission, which is fairly similar to mitosis, not exactly. Uh, and so organisms like you see here in the picture, these organisms will actually split themselves into two. It's a very rudimentary form of reproduction. It's called asexual reproduction. It doesn't require a second individual. And so the end result are going to be two genetically identical daughter cells. Here's that same animation. Again, the chromatin just copied itself. The nucleus dissolves. The chromosomes are forming. The chromosomes are being pulled to the middle of the cell. The chromatids are being pulled apart. Cytokinesis divides the cell. The chromatin uncoils and the nucleus reforms. But when we examine these, the, the two nuclei, we can see that inside of the nuclei, the DNA is identical. Two red strands of DNA, two black strands of DNA, and two green strands of DNA. So mitosis makes exact copies. Okay, so I want to I want to address the larger picture here. Mitosis is just a very small step in the life of a cell. The overall life of a cell is what we call the cell cycle. You can see in the picture mitosis is just a small portion of the overall what's called cell cycle. So by definition, the cell cycle is simply the repeating set of events in the life of a cell. And we can break down the cell cycle into various stages. And that's kind of what the rest of this video is going to address. We're going to address in a moment a stage called interphase. Interphase even has a few sub-stages, the G1, the S, and the G2 stage. After interphase comes prophase, and then comes metaphase, and then comes anaphase, and then comes telophase. The last four, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, these are the stages known as mitosis. So when we, uh, when we look at the picture, we can see the mitosis, again, is only four stages, and it's a fairly small step 
or I should say a fairly small portion of the life of a cell. So let's go ahead, go ahead and talk about interphase first. After all, interphase from the picture you can see is the vast majority of the life of a cell. So let's first address interphase. After all, it is the largest portion of the cell cycle. And so interphase can be divided into three substages, and you saw their abbreviations a moment ago. The first is called the G1 stage. The G, you, you may hear it stands for growth because the cell does grow. You might also hear that the G stands for gap, the gap one stage, because this is the first gap prior to, uh, prior to mitosis. And so during the G1 stage, the cell performs its normal functions. And so this is where a, a, a cell of your stomach, for instance, would be releasing digestive enzymes to help break down your food because that's what cells of the stomach normally do. This is where uh, your cells of your nervous system would be like, uh, would, like brain cells would be sending messages all around, uh, all around your nervous system because that's what they normally do. So during the G1 stage, cells are performing their normal jobs. Eventually the cells will grow and, and they will also create more organelles, more mitochondria, more vacuoles, more lysosomes, more uh, rough and smooth ERs. So next comes the S stage, and the S stands for the word synthesis, which simply is a word that means to make. So something is made during the S stage, and that something happens to be DNA. In the picture here, this is going to be an animation, we have six pieces of what are called chromatin in the cell. Two red, two black, two green. So these are, these are going to represent the strands of DNA that are in the cell known as chromatin. Watch the animation. Right now you can see the chromatin was duplicated. That's characteristic of the S stage of interphase. And then we have the final stage of interphase called the G2 stage. Again, the G, you may hear it stands for growth or gap two. It's the second gap prior to mitosis. And so this is the G2 stage. And like it says, uh, the, the cell will grow some more, but ultimately the cell is gonna be performing its normal function. And so all of these events are getting the cell ready for mitosis. So interphase is not actually part of mitosis. Let's go into mitosis next. So mitosis begins with the step called prophase. So prophase is the first mitosis stage. And what happens, one of the, these, what are one of the notable features that happens is the, the stringy version of DNA, again, that's called chromatin, is going to coil into these X-shaped chromosomes. Watch the animation. In the animation, you can see the stringy threads of DNA disappear and the X-shaped chromosomes appear. Next, the nucleus is going to dissolve, and there it goes. And when that happens, the, the chromosomes are simply spilled into the cytoplasm of the cell. Finally, some, uh, what's going to happen is objects called spindle fibers are going to form. You might know that cells contain an organelle called centrioles. And from the centrioles, these spindle fibers are going to grow. Now, we'll show you what their job is in just a moment, but the spindle fiber, fibers begin to grow and form during the prophase stage. Well, let's move on to the next stage called metaphase. So when we move on to the next stage called metaphase, metaphase is the second stage of mitosis. And there's really one big characteristic event that happens during metaphase. The spindle fibers are going to attach to the centromeres of each chromosome. So there they go. The spindle fibers just attach to the central location of the chromosomes. Well, that's not the main characteristic right there. The main characteristic of metaphase is this right here. The spindle fibers are going to pull the chromosomes to the cell's equator. Watching my animation, those X-shaped objects are being pulled to the cell's equator. The equator is, again, just the central line, like an imaginary central line, like the Earth has, a, has a, the equator, so does the cell. And so uh, that's a very straightforward characteristic image of what cells look like when they're in metaphase. All the chromosomes are going to be lined up along the middle like that. Well, now we're going to set up what's called anaphase. So now we move on into anaphase. Anaphase is the third stage of mitosis. And what you see right here in the notes, the, this really is the characteristic step 
of the characteristic feature of anaphase. Spindle fibers are going to rip apart the chromosomes. Remember that one chromosome is made from two chromatids. The two halves of a chromosome are called sister chromatids. So watching the animation, the sister chromatids get pulled apart. One of the chromatids got pulled to the left, one of the chromatids got pulled to the right, and so you have this collection of chromatids on the left of the cell, another collection of chromatids on the right of the cell. And so when we get near the end, we come to the stage called telophase. Telophase is the fourth and final stage of mitosis. And so what happens is those spindle fibers, their job has been fulfilled. They really have no purpose any longer, so they're going to simply dissolve. There they go in the animation. Another characteristic of telophase is that a process called cytokinesis may occur. Now, cytokinesis doesn't always occur during telophase. It might even begin during anaphase. I'm just putting it in these notes right here during telophase because we're winding down. We're getting near the end. But watch the animation. Right down the middle of that cell, cytokinesis is going to occur, splitting the cytoplasm of the cell on the left from the cell on the right. That's called cytokinesis. The next thing that's going to happen, again, the nucleus is going to reform. You know that these are all eukaryotic cells, so they all have to possess a nucleus. So there goes the nucleus. It's reforming, protecting the, uh, the, the pieces of DNA that it's surrounded. And lastly, one of the final things is that the chromatids, those sister chromatids, are going to unwind back into the linear strands of DNA called chromatin. So here we have in the animation the linear strands of chromatin called, uh, the linear strands of chromatin reform, the chromatids unwind back into the chromatin. And so the end result is our two identical diploid cells. And notice how they're identical because they each have the same amount and the same type of DNA in them. Two red pieces of DNA for each, two black pieces of DNA, and two green pieces of DNA. And so I kind of brushed over uh, cytokinesis really quick. I want to just mention a few other features about cytokinesis. Sometimes it starts during anaphase, sometimes it starts during telophase, but ultimately cytokinesis is the dividing of the cytoplasm. It's just a little, a little different in animal cells versus plant cells. So in the picture we have an animal cell. In animal cells during cytokinesis the cell membrane is simply going to be is going to pinch inward until eventually those two cells break apart from one another. Well, that's great in animal cells, but the problem with plant cells, plant cells have that hard outer layer called the cell wall to them, and so plant cells are a lot more rigid. They're not able to just pinch so in plant cells, here we have an animation in plant cells, you can see a plate begins to form down the middle and it grows outward, eventually separating the two new cells. Now, this doesn't happen over and over and over and over like you see in my animation. I'm just allowing it to happen more than once just to draw your attention to it. And so ultimately that cell plate is going to form and there you go, the cells are going to split apart. And so there's a little bit of a distinction between cytokinesis of animals and cytokinesis of plants. So as we wrap up this video, here's a little practice quiz here. I'm going to go through a series of photographs. Pause the video. Try to figure out what stage of the cycle is this. Is this a picture of interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase? Pause the video. I'm going to go over the answers in three two, one. So the hint, in case you're stuck, the hint is right there. You can see the red chromatids are being pulled apart. A, a half of the chromatids are being pulled to the right of the cell. The other half of the chromatids are being pulled to the left of the cell. That's a characteristic of anaphase. Here's another one. So same thing, pause the video. Is this, and think about it, is this interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase? I'm going to show the answer in three, two, one. So first of all, a clue, 
right there, I've, I, I've highlighted the clue that you can see that the red X-shaped chromosomes are aligned in the middle of the cell. This is a picture that is characteristic of metaphase. Here's another one. Is this a picture of interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, or telophase? Pause the video. I'm going to show the answer in three, two, one. So there's a couple clues I can give you. Clue number one, you can see the blue spindle fibers are forming. Clue number two, you can see that the nucleus is starting to break apart. You see there's holes in the, in the nucleus. You can see the nucleus is dissolving. Clue number three, you can see the X-shaped chromosomes are beginning to form. So there's three clues right there that this is a picture characteristic of prophase. Here's another one. Is this a picture of interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase? Pause the video. I'm going to go over the answer in three, two, one. So I think the feature that gives this answer away is you can see that there are not one, but there are two nuclei appearing in this picture. And this happens during telophase. Telophase is near the end. There's going to be two nuclei, and eventually that cell will split right down the middle. Here's the last picture. Again, uh, is this interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, or telophase? Pause the video. I'm going to go over the answer in three, two, one. So what we have here is a, is a nucleus that's intact. This is a normal looking cell right here. This is a normal looking cell because the cell is probably doing its normal function. This is something that is very characteristic of interphase. And so there you go. If you're in my biology class, I would try to try to uh, answer these questions right here on a separate sheet of paper, and I'd be happy to check your answers before class or after class. Good luck.